down that would be best so my name is Prue so I understand that my sisters and I are going to kind of guide you in the right direction I know that you're very new to the world of being a witch yes we were in the same position not too long ago so trust me we understand mm -hmm. and we're not going to be super harsh on you but we are offering a bit of a guide in the right direction or a starting point for where you can begin to practice your craft, understand it, see what's best for you. Mm -hmm. Every witch is different. Something that might work for my sisters and I might not work for you, but we're offering you this starting point. Yes. Just because we're the charmed ones doesn't always make us experts important to remember, okay? So as I said, we're not going to be harsh on you, but I do take this pretty seriously. Mm -hmm. And from what I can tell, you are as well. Good. Mm -hmm. It's okay to feel out of place. Hopefully when you're done with <laughs> My sisters and I, you'll feel a little bit more relaxed from all of what we have to say. For me personally, I'm going to be working a bit with spells. Of course, I can't teach you everything there is to know about spells. No, and there's so many variations of every spell, and every witch or warlock has their own supply of spells. So, Yes, yours could be very different from mine, but I want to give you some introduction to some. Mm -hmm. Yes, you don't necessarily have to memorize these particular spells, but go over them, practice them a little bit to get an idea of how spells work. Mm -hmm. So, let's go ahead and begin. Okay. So I want you to use this book here as just kind of a starting point. Mm -hmm. I don't want you to feel like you're in school, but you can always take notes of things I'm saying just to get you started on the right path alright? alright, so this is for you and I have a few spells let's see, one, two three, four, five, six I have roughly nine spells that I want us to just look at. As I said, you don't have to remember all of these. Mm -mm. I just kind of want you to see how these are laid out. Because you're very new to all this, right? Okay. Alright, don't worry. So, something that is going to be important is that we don't say the words out loud. That's very important. You really need to mean it if you're going to be casting a spell aloud, especially now that you're a witch. Mm -hmm. yes. Reading it quietly usually works best, okay? So, to begin, I have this past life spell. Mm -hmm. to essentially show you something that a past life mm -hmm, is wanting to show you, tell you, etc. 
something that's important, even. Mm -hmm. Yes. Some of these have come from my own family's Book of Shadows that has been passed down through the Hallowell line for many generations. Mm -hmm. Does your family have anything like that? Every family is different, so you may be the first one in your family to start your line, so you could begin to compile your own version of your family's Book of Shadows that you could in turn pass on to your children and grandchildren and so on. Okay. So no, I did not write all of these. My sisters and I do write spells on occasion. Mm -hmm. But a lot of what we've learned has been passed down through the generations. Mm -hmm. So I know you don't exactly have that, but my sisters and I are here to hopefully give you some sort of starting point. Good. All right, so past life spell. Mm hmm So, there's going to be one, two, three, four, about four lines to this spell. Some spells are shorter, some are longer. You can kind of relate it to poetry. Some of them may rhyme, some of them don't. It kind of depends on the witch or warlock that wrote the spell to begin with or on what exactly you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. It is always important to remember that with any sort of spells or powers that you may be using, that you're using them for the right reason. Either there's a purpose to it, or you are trying to help someone. Personal gain for magic does have consequences. So why don't you go ahead and read over this past life spell in your head and let me know if you have any questions. Now I'm specifically only showing you um, some spells or knowledge that would be helpful for you, mm -hmm. even if you're new to the craft. I'm avoiding specific um, things. Power of three spells wouldn't do you any good, things of that nature, so like I said, spells, charms, anything like that, there's a wide range and variety of different versions to each spell that each witch may choose to adjust or change for themselves. Okay. Good. So next up, we have a very um, interesting spell. It can be very handy, but it can also be <laughs> a mess of things if you're not careful. So it's very important to be careful. And it's to exchange powers. Mm hmm Yes. And do you have an active power? Right. Okay. Mm hmm Right. And you might find that that will continue to grow, shift, or change as you dive further into your own craft. Or it may stay the same, each which is different. My powers have progressed over time. Mm -hmm. Yes, my sister's as well. It really just depends. Okay, that's something important to remember. So, for something like this, you're essentially going to switch powers with another magical being, whether that be another witch, another warlock, um, could be a white lighter, in some extreme cases, it could be a demon, but that would be a very extreme situation, and you are nowhere near that level yet, okay? Yeah. 
I don't want you to feel like we're babying you, but we do want you to be cautious because some of these can be very important and dangerous. Okay. Okay. So, to exchange power, let's see. One, two, four. It's about four lines again for this one. So, once again, I want you to go ahead and just kind of read through it in your mind. Don't say it out loud. <laughs> It would be interesting if we switched powers, but perhaps another day. Mm -hmm. So just go ahead and read that through and let me know if you have any questions. straightforward spell once again and you can clearly see what it's meaning what it's intending for your magic mm -hmm. some spells will be very straightforward like that so you know exactly what's to come of the spell others are a little bit more complicated mm -hmm. All right. next up we have um, the truth spell yes. I have used this personally I like to warn people of this slightly. It had some unforeseen circumstances when I cast this spell. It's one of those times where I personally wasn't cautious. Mm -hmm. And as you can imagine, it's basically going to make anyone you ask a question, yes, they have to tell the truth, but one of the, you know, side effects of the spell is that you also have to answer questions, truthfully. Honestly, anyone that is in the house or residence at the time will be affected by this spell. Mm -hmm. It's one of those ones you really need to be careful with. So, this one is a little bit longer and it's more detailed in that it has a, a time period Mm -hmm. an expiration date, if you will. Okay, so go ahead and read that through, and let me know if you have any questions. Yes, this one is much more detailed in that, like I said, it already has a time period, and then after that time, the memories of those questions or answers is gone. Not all spells are like that. They don't just erase things that happened during that time period, okay? So it, it can be positive to have those memories erased, if you will, but in other circumstances it may cause a problem very important to understand all the details of the spell before you cast it. Next we have um, a shorter one again, dealing with time, accelerate time, mm -hmm, essentially. Yes, instead of going back, really, it's to jump forward in a way. And messing with time is very, very difficult and picky. I wouldn't recommend it. Well, if you happen to go back in time and change something that shouldn't have been changed, that can affect the entire future. Could affect if you're born, if someone you love is born, how the world is. Mm -hmm. And then going into the future to change something, it might not always work because the future is always changing. So for this one, go ahead and read that.
Mm -hmm. Pretty straightforward again. No. Five more spells I want to briefly go over with you. This next one is specific to a magical being, a banshee. Mm -hmm. You could always adjust the spell to track or search for another being once you're to that level, of course, but this one is specifically a banshee tracking spell. Mm -hmm. So, let's see. Uh, one, two, three, four. Mm hmm Okay, so go ahead, read that one through. Let me know what you think of it. So this is one of those spells that has an interesting <laughs> effect from it. You wouldn't exactly expect this to happen, mm -hmm. and that's another reason to be careful with spells <laughs> that my sisters and I have learned the hard way sometimes. With this spell, tracking a banshee, who is specific on their cry, mm -hmm. Essentially, the person that is best fit turns into a dog because of dog's hearing, yes. Not exactly what we expected when we cast the spell. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so make note of that and remember that, that sometimes a spell might not go exactly how you intend it to. It may still work mm -hmm. in that form we are able to track the banshee, but not exactly what we expected. Um, here is another, another time one that, you know, we talked about, um, accelerating time. This is back in time. As I said, you need to be very careful and only very, you know, important circumstances should you be messing or playing around with time, especially in such, um, a new form that you are. Okay, so another short one. It's one of our shorter ones today. Go ahead and have a look at back in time. Hear these words, hear the rhyme. Heat the hole within my mind. Send me back to where I'll find what I wish in place in time. Mm -hmm. Pretty straightforward again, and that's obviously going to be one where it's sending you back to a specific time So your mind has to be clear and ready to You know accept what time period you're looking for mm -hmm. Okay, then we have to call a lost witch mm -hmm. And this can be searching for a witch it can be used for a variety of things to contact a lost witch kind of depends on the caster what exactly the witch or warlock is intending with the spell okay so go ahead and look that one over So this is an extended version of the spell. So essentially, if you would say be related to the witch, um, that's where the last line comes in. Any blood to blood spells, you're looking for family members, mm -hmm. or you're trying to contact someone that shares the same bloodline as you do. Mm -hmm. For me, if I was to cast this, I would be looking for a Hallowell witch. Mm -hmm. If that's not your intention to look for someone that you're related to, then you would simply not use the last line, if that makes sense. Any of the blood-to-blood -blood magic, mm -hmm. you would just simply not use that. And just stick to the beginning of this spell to where it's more open for interpretation. Okay? Um, 
this is um, another interesting spell and can verge on the personal gain. Okay, always important to remember. <laughs> there can be some consequences from personal gain spells. So, Heart's Desire, go ahead and have a look at that one. My love is strong. So do you see how it can kind of like teeter on the personal gain? Yeah, the witch is clearly asking for a question answered, but it also relates to their love life. So it doesn't exactly fit some of the non-personal gain topics, if you will. Mm -hmm. Just important to remember those things. Okay. The last spell um, is something that I would like you to maybe perhaps remember, and it's like a safety spell. I can't tell you that there is a spell or a charm or a potion to completely secure and guarantee your safety. Yes, This world is very dangerous, but some spells and charms like this can help in times of need. Okay. So go ahead and look at the safety spell. In the circle that is on, the safety is called to people's room. Rid all beings from these walls. Save sisters three. Now he don't go. Mm-hmm. So once again, this is more relating to my sisters and I. Yeah charmed ones but this is a perfect opportunity where you can adjust the spell for yourself or the situation so you wouldn't necessarily have to say save sisters three mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, you could switch it let's see you could say something protect this witch blessed be instead of save sisters three, you know, something that could be interchangeable like that. Okay? Good. All right, so those were just some of the spells that I wanted to introduce you to. Obviously, I'm not expecting you to be a spell expert. I don't want you to go home and start writing a million spells or casting them. Mm -hmm. You've come to us for advice and help, and we're hopefully going to lead you in the right direction. So it may take a couple times visiting us here. Mm -hmm. We don't mind. So we went over the past life spell to exchange power, the truth spell, accelerate time, banshee tracking spell to call a lost witch, back in time, heart's desire, and a safety spell. Okay? Alright. Well, you are pretty much all set with me today. I don't want to overload too much into you. And of course, you need to go visit my sisters now. So I believe that Piper is all ready for you down in the kitchen. Do you need me to show you where that is? Yeah, just down the stairs, past the dining room, through the pantry, and you'll find the kitchen. Alright? Don't worry, you're doing well so far, okay? Alright, go ahead and head downstairs. Hello? Come on in. My name's Piper. It's nice to meet you. Alright, so... We're going to be talking about potions and some ingredients today for making potions. Mm -hmm. Potions are kind of my expertise, you could say, so we all thought it would be best if I kind of ran over some basics for you. Okay. I believe that Prue gave you a book to kind of jot some things down. Okay, so I kind of have list here of some different ingredients that we use for different purposes for potions. All potions.
instructions are very different depending on what you need it for. So it is important to kind of study up on what ingredients, herbs you need for what type of potion. Mm -hmm. You'll find that some potions require a very distinct recipe, while others you can adjust and play around with. I wouldn't exactly recommend that for you just now, since you're still very new. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you have your book ready, I just kind of want to go over some of these together so you can get a feel for different things that are used in different potions. There are literally thousands of other ingredients that could be used, so I'm just starting you off with some basics. Okay, so this category is, I would say, like, upper level vanquishing potions. So that means that an upper level demon requires a different type of potion to be vanquished. Mm -hmm. Yes, it needs to be much stronger than, say, a potion for a warlock or other creature. Okay? Alright, so we'll kind of create that category there. So, just some examples. Waltzbane. Hemlock root. Pig's feet. I know. And then, one of the most important ingredients for an upper level vanquishing potion is flesh from the demon. I know if you're squeamish, that might not be for you, but it is necessary for that particular type of potion. Mm hmm. Yeah, you'll learn to work through the queasiness of witchcraft. Okay, so those are just four things. As I said, it can be hundreds of other ingredients, and it depends on what demon you're trying to vanquish. Mm hmm. It's important to jot these down and start to study them because some ingredients when mixed together can be quite dangerous and I don't mean like they will vanquish a demon dangerous I mean for you you do not want a potion to blow up in your face mm -hmm. it's very important to keep your safety in mind so then we have lower level vanquishing okay so these would be lower level demons so, it's just some examples. Mm -hmm. Okay, so firewood trimmings, witch hazel, liverwood. Okay. Yeah, I mean, if you want to take all of these ingredients that I'm sharing with you and do your own research, and the next time we see each other, we can kind of touch base on what you've learned. Mm -hmm. It is important that you take the time to learn these things if you're going to be mixing together potions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I'm a chef, so it kind of comes second nature to me, but... Mm -hmm. Do you cook? So you might have a handle on it. It's just new ingredients to learn, and you need to understand what ingredient brings what to the potion. Okay. Then you have a different category like summoning, calling, or banishing. Okay, so these can be accompanied by like a spell. Mm -hmm. Okay, so for example, um, blood, that's really going to be if it's um, like a blood to blood spell. Leave Prue went over that with you. Okay. Um, carrot seeds is a good one for these type of potions, oddly enough. You will find that some ingredients um, you can use that are already in your kitchen. Mm -hmm. Dragon root. Eel skin. Or snake skin. I personally like to work with eel skin. Rosemary. Yarrow root, 
frankincense. category. Okay, so we have antidotes and disempowering. Mm. Disempowering potions are limited. Not, <laughs> you can't disempower every sort of magical being that you will come across, but it does work on some. Okay. So, things like almond oil, chickweed, and twice blessed water. Okay. I know I'm throwing a lot of different ingredients at you, and I don't expect you to completely have all of them memorized the next time we see each other, but it's just important to have a starting point, and this is truly a very minimal list of the potential items that you could put in a potion. Okay? okay. So, other studies, I just want you to one, two, three, make note of these four other ingredients, if you will. So, lox oil, mm -hmm. poppy seed, wormwood, and milkweed. Okay, so, um, you should have on your list Wolfsbane, Spain, Hemlock Root, Pig's Feet, Demon Flesh, Firewood, Witch Hazel, Liverwood, Blood, Carrot Seeds, Dragon Root, Eel Skin or Snake Skin, Rosemary, Yarrow root, frankincense, almond oil, chickweed, twice blessed water, lox oil, poppy seed, wormwood, and milkweed. Mm hmm. So now that you have all of those listed, I'm going to give you kind of a, a bit of a cheat sheet book that you can take with you and kind of study some of the um, other purposes or uses of each ingredient and which ones go together and which ones do not. So you can start to look over and learn and study more about these ingredients here. Mm -hmm. Also the forms that they come in. Clearly some of these um, would come in more of like plant form, herbs, others are specifically oils, mm -hmm. others are obviously different types of thing when you look at a pig's feet or eel skin, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. And then it's good to know what type of the plant, you know. Are you going to be using the leaf, um, the root, the stem? All of these are very important and sometimes can change the direction of the potion. Mm -hmm. So for example, I do have just like this here. Or some arms that we have. These are mostly in crushed form. That may also be different for each potion. Do they need to be crushed? Do they need to be chopped? Or full leafed? Okay. Then we have you know, just different types. Aging may be part of the potion as well. Whether the herbs themselves are aged like these. Or if the potion needs to be aged, needs to boil, needs to be frozen. All of these are very important details for each type of potion you make. But I don't want to overwhelm you. 
I just want you to start with some of the basics of how to use these specific ingredients. And these are some roots here. Okay. So, just important to keep that sort of thing in mind. I did want to show you some potions that I already have on hand. Mm -hmm. So, let me show you. This one is a upper level vanquishing. Yeah, so this specific one, let's see, it does have wolfsbane in it, as well as the pig's feet and demon flesh. This specific one doesn't have hemlock root, but some different roots instead. Mm -hmm. So, this, for example, is our upper level demon vanquishing potion. Potion will also depend on what type of bottle you put it in or how it's stored. Alright, so that's an example of a vanquishing potion. This one is a little less worrisome as it is actually a power enhancer. Mm -hmm. yes. So, for example, if I was to take this potion here, my ability to freeze or blow things up would be intensified. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. For you, oh, a sleeping potion, which, you know, <laughs> depends on the situation here. It's fairly basic, though. Right. Lots of lavender. smell it? Oh. Yeah. yeah, go ahead and take it. Mm -hmm. Smells nice, right? Don't worry, it won't affect you unless you actually ingest it. Mm -hmm. Of course. Oh, be careful! Mm -hmm. Just pick that back up. <laughs> no. That's something else that you'll learn. Witches' powers. Do not work on other witches. Want to be careful. This was just a sleeping potion. But if it was something more intense, something explosive, dropping it over like that could have been very dangerous, okay? Alright. And the last one that I wanted to share with you was a, um, a blinding potion. Mm -hmm. So this can be used on a variety of things, creatures, warlocks, demons, etc. Mm -hmm. So this is the basic look of it. And then to fully activate it, don't worry, it won't do it, you have to throw it and break it to create the blinding effect. But to activate it, you're gonna mix the liquid and the herbs fully together. So it properly mixes all together. It's a great combination of all the ingredients into one. Mm -hmm. And then it 
it's ready. And this is, as I said, the one that you will throw, and that is going to start the blinding process, so don't worry. It's not going to blind you right now. Those are just four of the mini potions I already have made up. You'll find that once you get more comfortable with potion making, that you will have some already made up for when it's needed. Okay. Do you have any questions for me? Mm hmm. Yeah, which one was that? Right. Um, some of these, um, I can take you to some of the shops that I go to pick these up. Other ones you can just get from a normal grocery store. Mm -hmm. But we're not exactly to that step yet. I want you to study some of these first before you dive in head first. I don't want you to blow up your kitchen. Okay. Okay, well if you're all set and ready, I think that Phoebe is waiting for you. Yep, I'll just clean up some of this stuff here. It was nice to meet you. I look forward to seeing you again. Hi. Finished with Piper? Okay. Um, my name is Phoebe. It's nice to meet you. Mm -hmm. So you've gone over spells with Prue, potions with Piper. For me, I'm going to just give you a couple um, tips or tricks mm -hmm, in kind of self-defense. You never know what you're going to go up against in this world, okay? It can be a lot to take in. And for me, I haven't always had an active power. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When I first started... Um, my process into being a witch, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. I only had premonitions, which can be in handy, but it wasn't an active power like my sister's. So I took the steps to practice a bit of self-defense, kickboxing, things like that. Mm -hmm. So if need be, I would be able to protect myself. Yes, the best way that I knew how. Mm -hmm. So, some of these are not always going to benefit you. You don't know what type of warlock or demon you may be facing, but a lot of times, these simple steps or moves can come in handy, okay? Mm -hmm. And this is not based around being a witch. Not at all. I mean, you could go and join a kickboxing class like I did and learn some of this on your own. I wouldn't really spread it around that you're planning to fight demons, but... Mm -hmm. Okay, so this isn't going to be like a full class for you or anything. Just some tips. Mm -hmm. Some things that I remember if I have to go head to head. So your balance is very important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wouldn't say that you have to be super stand up straight, your posture, because sometimes if you're not used to it, that's going to put you a little off balance. So it is important that you are comfortable in your stance with where your shoulders are. Okay. Okay. So are you comfortable like that? And depending on different classes or things you can look at, you may work on holding your arms up mm -hmm, for any sort of, you know, boxing or kickboxing classes. Throwing punches or swings is definitely going to help you or benefit you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's all about that balance because... You want to be completely secure and balanced in your own body before you think about striking or going up against a warlock. Mm-hmm. Okay. Good. Now, 
being as you are new to this, I do want to remind you to try and protect yourself. There's only so much we can do. Mm -hmm. I mean, you do have a relatively active power, so that's going to benefit you, but you're still learning. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if, say, a demon or a warlock was to come up to you and push you back or surprise you, it's going to be really important that you get in a process of remembering and memorizing moves or techniques that can help protect your body. This isn't a spell, this isn't a charm, this isn't a magical power. This is just ways that you can process in your mind to help protect your own body, okay? Alright, so say someone pushes you, okay? So you push back, maybe even up against a wall or something hard, depending on the situation or where you are. The most important thing in that moment is to protect your head, okay? It's going to be your head injury will be most important. And if you black out, if you get a head injury, a concussion, anything of that nature, you're going to be vulnerable. You won't have time to use your power. You won't have time to say a spell because you've blacked out. So it's important for you to practice and practice remembering to protect yourself, okay? And it's going to take time, and that's totally okay. It took me a while, too. So something specifically to if you are pushed back, Mm -hmm. push back, say up against a wall, is to lean your head forward. Essentially, you're going to put your chin to your chest. And in turn, it's going to curve your back. Mm -hmm. So your back hits up against the wall, but your head is protected. So the core of your body will kind of take the hit instead of your head your face, your brain, your skull, mm hmm yeah, so it's almost like a rolling motion, you're going to tuck, and then in turn, you kind of roll over, not so far over that you want to fall forward, it's just a natural step, your chin down to your chest, mm hmm yep, chin down to your chest, your spine will automatically start to curve, and that's going to protect the back of your head from impact. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Do you want to try that? Yeah, just do it naturally. Just back. And you can do this all day long, really, just to get into a comfortable place where it's almost like muscle memory. Your muscles remember to bring your chin down to your chest. Okay? Mm hmm Go ahead. You want to do it with me? Like that. Like that. There. Yep. Go ahead. Good. Don't go too far forward. Remember, you want to keep that balance so that you're ready to pop back up. Okay. Chin to chest. Chin to chest. Chin to chest. Good. Good. So now, I'm just going to push you forward, just lightly. Okay, so practice that up against the wall here, right? I'm going to push you back, put my hand right against your chest here. Mm -hmm. Push you back and immediately start to bring your chin down to your chest and curve your back. Right. One, two, three. Good. Okay. One, two, three. Good. Good. One, both hands. Two, three. Good. Good. And you'll get faster and it will become more of a natural movement for you to bring your chin down and curve to protect your head, okay? Mm hmm because that's most important that even if it's a surprise attack, you can remember to do that. You can pop back up. Mm hmm 
whether you choose to use your power, a spell, perhaps you're carrying a potion with you, whatever the situation is, it's important that you don't black out because that can be super dangerous for you, especially if you're alone. Okay? Okay, I'm just going to look to the side of you, okay? And I'm going to kind of bring my hand around to push you back, but I just want to make sure that, you know, you're curving how you should be so that you can continue to practice at home. Okay? All right. So I'm just going to step to the side of you here. I'm going to keep my hand out here to push you back. Are you ready? So just remember your chin here is going to go down to your chest. Are you ready? One, two, three. Good. Okay. One, two, three. Good. Good. All right. And just, just want to make sure that your head and neck, right position. Exactly. Okay. Just a little bit there. All right. Good. Do you feel like that's something that you could practice or something that would benefit you. It's a super easy step and it's minor. Of course, if you want to learn more, train more, there's going to be millions of other things that you can do to protect yourself mm -hmm. or offensive moves as well. Okay. Wonderful. So another thing that I just wanted to briefly touch on while you're here with us today Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm sure I'm going to see you again, so we can always touch base, and we can even practice together mm -hmm. as you continue to grow, learn, train. Yeah, we can adjust everything. Don't worry, I'm not going to just go out full on and attack you. <laughs> okay, so something, once again, depending on the warlock, creature, demon that you're going up against you may choose to fight back. And I don't really want to go into punches or hits today. Mm -hmm. I do just want to work on something more basic. Mm -hmm. So you don't know what you're going to expect, especially if it's a surprise attack, okay? So something basic to start with, to start to train your body towards, is going to relate to your elbow. Mm -hmm. And something that's important about elbow and the movement mm -hmm, moving across your body, that, yep, technically either side, both elbows, depending on what angle the attack comes from. Mm -hmm. So if we're focusing on our elbows, it's important to make sure that you make an impact but that you're not harming yourself as well. So instinct might tell you to lift your elbow up in an upward motion, okay? Right. But if you're not executing that in the right angle, the right move, if you're nervous even, you can end up hurting yourself instead of the attacker. There are a lot of bones in, your, in their jaw, the face, okay? So it can sometimes injure them, other times not, and you'll end up hurting your own elbow, arm, and make the situation worse for yourself. So beginning and starting off, I want you to keep your elbows at about shoulder and chest length. Mm -hmm. So when you move across your body, and your elbow just goes back into their chest, their shoulders, mm -hmm. You're gonna have more strength here too. When your arms are like this, you're more balanced than when they're angled like this. Going up can cause you to go off balance. You can even kind of lose weight on your legs, okay? But when you're standing here sturdy and just back, you kind of just swing your hips. Mm -hmm. Back. Right? Back. Yeah, go ahead and put your your arms up. You can do one at a time. Yep. 
just back across. And this is going to be something that you can, of course, practice on. You can hit into um, different mats, different punching bags, things like that, mm -hmm. to where your body really adjusts to it. So that same with the chin to chest, it's almost muscle memory of you remembering to keep your elbow at a normal angle and back mm -hmm. instead of up. Right. Even kind of aiming down, I don't really think that you would be doing that very often depending on if they're taller than you or about your height. But even if you go down and you're not exactly prepared for it, you can once again lose balance, okay? So go ahead and keep your arms and your elbows up. Mm hmm. No, oh, that looks good. Okay. And go ahead and just try a couple of these. Yeah, we're just working on the motion because we're not specifically hitting anything yet. Okay. Good. Good. Right. Once you get more advanced, you can add more movements to this once you do the elbow. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can in turn hit with your other hand, kind of as a circle motion, elbow, and then you're turned this way, depending on the person or how advanced you are. You're not there yet, okay? Or there's the kicking as well but that really needs to be balanced. You need to be ready for that because also if you do a bad kick, you can hurt your foot, your ankle, and endanger yourself, okay? And you also need to remember, if you're not familiar with this demon or this warlock, you don't know what type of powers they're bringing. Mm -hmm. You, of course, can practice your active power as much as you can to tie that in Mm -hmm. Everyone's going to be different in that aspect if they have something like a power to add in, okay? But it's also good to remember the basics, to keep yourself safe and protected. Mm -hmm. Do you have any other questions? I know it's, it's kind of basic things. I'm not here to give you a full class of self-defense or anything like that. But those are just two things that I learned early on when I didn't have an active power that have helped me a lot of times. So, protecting your head, mm-hmm, and curling in if you're pushed up against a wall, something like that. Exactly, and also when you go to put your chin down to your chest, that can stop someone from grabbing you from the neck because you've protected your neck. Mm-hmm. Yeah. These are just little things that you're going to learn as you practice, as you train, as you gain experience in this world. Okay? Okay. We'll go ahead and practice those things. Practice the motion. Mm-hmm. And just practice some of the movement. If you want to start, you know, using a punching bag or something to kind of practice with your elbow movements. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wonderful. Well, I think that's all I wanted to share with you today. I'm sure you'll be back to the manor before we know it. Okay. Well, it was lovely to talk to you, and I hope that you can practice some of those things, and that will help you out, put you in the right direction forward, okay? Good. All right. I'll see you next time. I'm just glad that you're okay. 
Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's have a look at your head here. It looks pretty sore. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm just gonna lean a little bit closer to you. Mm -hmm. My sisters thought that I might have a bit of a healing touch, if you will. And I've been working on it, embracing more of my white lighter side, if you will, but I still can't fully tap in to all the white lighter parts, but we're gonna try for you today. Can you tell me what happened? Were you expecting an attack? Okay. I know that sometimes we can really feel like we're ready to go out there and get that demon or that warlock, but you really need to be careful when you're by yourself. Okay? I mean, I'm with my sisters, so kind of a charmed ones thing, but for anyone that is going after anything dark by themselves, they need to take extra precautions, okay? Alright, so what I think I'm going to do is try to heal the spot on your forehead here. Mm -hmm. And your arm was hurt too, right? Can I see? Yeah. Okay. Does that hurt? Okay. So I'm going to work on your forehead and your arm here. so you can keep them open, whatever is most relaxing for you, okay? Alright. is new. that feel better now? Yeah, all better. You should feel perfect. Now how about this arm here, okay? Much better now? Good. Alright. I know that you're still a little shocked and your adrenaline is going and that's totally fine. I just want you to try and relax, calm down a little bit before you head home, okay? Yeah, you can stay here as long as you need to. Do you want some tea or something? Okay. Good. 
will help to calm you down. Good. Alright. down. take it in steps so that you don't rush things or that you don't put yourself at risk. Yeah. Um, my sisters have been doing this way longer than I have. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty used to everything now, but for a while there, I was very much the newbie like you, so I understand where you're coming from, but... And I tried to push things do my own thing, but kind of with their guidance, I found my good rhythm and how I could integrate magic, my craft, my powers into my life. Does that make sense? So you just need to take those steps forward, but be smart and safe at the same time. How's that D? just fine. I don't want this to ruin your confidence because this is just one bad time that happens to the best of us. We're just glad that you're alright. You're safe. Mm-hmm. Have you been studying those spells and potions and moves that Phoebe taught you? Good. All of it's coming together then. Alright, I think I'll go ahead and leave you to your tea. Like I said, you can stay here for as long as you need. Alright, good. Just try to calm down and relax. 